Last time on Zero to Hero, our boy Sil finished up the Griffin. With two more mounts to unlock, will he finally be done with this part of the journey? Find out that and much more on this episode of Zero to Hero. As you could probably tell by the title and the thumbnail, my primary focus this week has been on unlocking the Roller Beetle. I did do a quick snapshot of the account for a What Does 100 Hours in Guild Wars 2 look like? going back over things that we've already unlocked and a lot of the end game goals in terms of mount and gear that some of it we have and some of it we're still working on. I will be putting that video out at some point, so keep an eye out if you are interested in a full overview of where we are at. I think that the Mesmer has been a strong pick for this kind of journey considering its place in the meta as far as builds are concerned. That was kind of my intention. I didn't really realize how strong it was going to become over the next couple of months. And with the next balance patch on the horizon, it is looking like Power Virtuoso is going to be on the menu. So I'm looking forward to figuring that build out and implementing it into this account. I was able to get all of the best in slot gear for the Power Chrono and finally was able to hit crit cap and the damage is now pretty much comparable with every other player. I'm actually at an end game gear out. With a full ascended set, I'm looking forward to being able to climb fractals again and I did take a detour. I have been doing my dailies. I have been able to get extra gold out of the end game content, but I will probably be doing a raw climb outside of the dailies just to break into those levels. I'm almost to scale 40 at this point. So I'm almost out of tier two and into the danger zone tier three. It always gets a bad rep, but we'll just see how it goes when we get there. And I have a quick question. And this is not a weekly question. I just uh, was thinking about it. Do you guys think that using a Discord group is cheating on this account? So I was going to just use the LFG for all of the raid stuff. However, it would be a lot more efficient and easier if I were to just post my groups that I'm commanding on the North America Raid Academy LFG, but that is kind of an external source. I would be able to cover Raid Academy as a resource for new players, so I'm kind of leaning towards doing it at least for this wing three. But let me know what you guys want. If you think that it is kind of a little bit out outside of the realm, I will just use the regular LFG if I don't find an LFG to complete those last couple of bits for the Envoy 1 collection. But I was just thinking and I thought I should ask you guys if you think it would take away from the experience if I did. If you think it's too cheese, I'll just use the LFG. Beyond that, the Roller Beetle is done like I mentioned earlier and the Roller Beetle collection was pretty straightforward. It was a lot of running around. It was a lot of getting locked behind different meta events. And the only things left for progression outside of doing a content mastery grind, which is only a few key lines that I feel are really valuable, is more or less the story. I have been working through the core story just so that way I could get the core mastery points. And I have been considering jumping into Living World Season 3 and 4. I do need to just blast all of those storylines for Living World Season 3 and 4 so that way I can start working on the Wayfarer's Hen achievement in Draconis Mons, which is something that I mentioned months ago is going to be a problem when we are working towards that legendary amulet. And so getting started on that now while we still have multiple things we can do uh, will be useful in kind of smoothing that thing along. But more importantly, now that we have our mounts, we can start positioning ourselves for a core Tyria map completion. I will be doing the Griffin Masteries for the dive skills and so on before I blast core Tyria, just because the map trails that I use do rely on a lot of the griffin flying to expedite the process. A full core Tyria map comp takes about 10 hours. We are already 25% done, so I don't foresee that taking that much longer. Maybe a week, a week and a half of casual playtime. The other time sync that we have is world versus world because obviously you can't make a legendary without gift of battle. So we need to do two gift of battles. And I'm also going to start trying to incorporate the provisioner token collection collecting provisioner tokens from heart of thorns maps i did jump in there for starting to energize those threads for the energy threads spirit threads but in short i'm 
trying to maximize the play time and minimize time gating. So, so world versus world, Corteria map comp, collecting our provisioner tokens, working on the envoy collection. And once we make progress on the Corteria mastery lines, I will probably be jumping into IBS. So that way I can get all of those masteries done. So that way the IBS fast five can be added into the rotation because that is going to basically fund all of the gifts of might, gifts of magic, and all of that stuff. Beyond all of that, we got quite a bit of news, which kind of ties into last week's questions about the specialization weapons. It looks like my upload frequency is about an hour before arena nets because we speculated on some new weapons and it appears that they dropped spears on land as the main weapon feature of the expansion. And if that was just some random like, oh, it's a dev environment, it's a bug or anything else, I am going to be laughing so hard come tomorrow when they do the full announcement. As you guys know, I'm not the type of creator to farm clicks on every little bit of information or news that gets released. So this is a good opportunity to talk about the upcoming news and what we know now. And I'll be doing a full Soto review with the expectations for the next X pack following the announcement tomorrow. But I noticed something interesting. There are essentially two primary things that the community is hyped for, which I find hilarious because from the last Soto drop to the new content announcement, the community was in ultra doom mode on fire. And then they show us a teaser and everyone is immediately in love again. It's a real Stockholm syndrome situation, but I digress. Land spears will be interesting, but ultimately it's no different than any other weapon. Arena net can make any weapon, anything. A spear can be a ranged weapon. It could be a melee weapon, condi, power, whatever. It does give them more freedom in a sense. I doubt that they are going to be doing anything crazy with them, but, but it'll be cool to finally RP as a paragon from Guild Wars 1. The second thing people are hype about is the possibility of Raid Wing 8. As people are speculating about the return of raids since Grouch put out something about, oh, the in-game community is going to be hype and they've been asking for this for five years, which is fine if they release good bosses. Frankly, Soto Strikes and the Soto Fractal have been kind of a mess and the in-game sweats do like zero CM since it's a brick wall they can beat their heads against. But for regular players that just want to blast these strikes, they are kind of whack in my opinion. They have way too much HP, their mechanics aren't interesting enough to keep most players engaged. The amount of time it takes to clear them, you see it in the DPS meter. Everyone starts out strong and then at like 60% health, everybody's like, well, I guess I'm gonna just do what I'm gonna do and they turn their brain off and do their most basic rotation. The fractal is similar in a sense that the boss has way too much HP and apparently the malice orbs are bugged which is what attributes to the cheese strategy that I highlighted in a different video. So with that strat fixed that boss is going to take significantly longer and when I beat him with a more conventional method even with the bug it took like 15 minutes. I'm still excited for the fractal CM but I'm not sure what kind of mess they are going to introduce into that fractal. I did read all of your ideas about weapons and I won't be going over them because we already know what we're gonna get. We're gonna get spears and it is literally a mystery gift. It can be anything, it could be one dollar, it could be a PS5, but in terms of what we're gonna get, we are gonna get a spear and that me that can mean anything. You know what I mean? So I did read all of your comments on the weapons and I thought your ideas were great. I was hoping I was I was getting ready to draft up my script with what I thought. I was hoping for like a warrior short bow, guardian daggers, but you know, we were getting the spear. As far as the other question that I had last week is what existing content should Arena Net tailor future releases on? And with the idea of a raid wing, I think Raid Wing 7 is a good middle ground. It has challenge modes. It has bosses that have straightforward mechanics. The HP seems reasonable for the amount of stuff going on. And there are unique roles and classes that can be used in each one. Most importantly, it is completable even on the challenge modes with random pugs that don't need to prog for months at a time. If this Raid Wing releases and it is harder than the existing ones or to the level of some of the CMs on the strike missions, 
I will not be able to interact with them. Like, I don't have a static. A lot of you guys don't have a static. How, well, it's it's a nothing burger. It's, a, it's an update with nothing for me to do because I can't interact with it. For strikes, I feel that we are only going to get two of them. For strikes, I feel that if we are only getting two of them per year, I feel like the Bone Skinner or Whisper of Jormag level fights are a good sweet spot, or maybe something even like Jean Lai Jade would be a good spot. I think Jean Lai Jade is probably a better one because the normal mode is very easily completable and the challenge mode is challenging enough that if you want that extra step, you have it. I think the HP sponge crap is so boring of a design and I find myself just skipping it altogether. For fractals, I think everybody kind of points to Sunqua P as the gold standard maybe shattered observatory i think those are probably the top two in the fractal community as far as people enjoy they have a lot of mechanics that are challenging enough to be engaging they have phases and skips that you can perform if you're really skilled the reason why dungeons and fractals are fun is partially because of the skips tricks and so on that you can help your group speed through them they're ultimately a get in do the thing and get out quick type of environment nobody is looking for a long drawn out fractal with a bunch of mechanics they want it to be engaging and i would like to see some fights that are power fights in fractals as it stands the last two have been condecentric just because of the abusive mechanics of that they put on the boss and they're really only super abusive and i want to get away from that i want to see some bosses that you can get in you can get in you can bring your warrior you can bring your dragon hunter you can bring your power soul beast and just blast it down so like always i'm going to post some questions for you this week and i will cover some of your answers from last week and then we will put a pin in this episode so for this week's questions what systems overhauls do you think this next x pack will bring the blog post said that it allowed them time to take care of some neglected systems and the whole hat on a hat thing what do you guys think that means and how do you think it's going to be implemented into the systems we currently have and secondly if you were trapped on an island and your only companion was a mermaid or a merman or whatever would you want the top half to be human or the bottom half to be human i know it's a weird one but i thought it'd be funny getting into the comments osiris wants a dungeons rework into fractals and i think that would ultimately be great the dungeons need a refresher altogether but i think that arena net said that the spaghetti code was too strong and whenever they touch it they just break so they just avoid them altogether. he broke down a new differentiation of in-game content and i honestly think it would work pretty well even though i feel that the higher number you get with the more players you get involved the more it turns into just a mess just like dragon's end it gets leached all day convergences get leached all day and i think that's how the 50 man content would run my man some guy was talking about warrior short bow and i think that's where i was leaning myself but i hope you like spears because that's what we're gonna get and as for the content model i think the endless features on features is getting kind of old like there's 18 different ways to get any particular item and half of them are some holiday vendor or something like just make things consistent so when you need an item it's like oh complete the story go to x guy and he gives it to you i feel like it's easier just all around and they are really 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 reliant on the wiki for this stuff that, it, that they end up implementing it's like oh just add it to the wiki page and it'll be fine jt says that he loves xcom 1 and i feel like that game was a little bit repetitive i did go back and run through xcom 1 but i i just like xcom 2 it's just better it feels better it's less routine and it it's obviously just a newer game so uh, of course I prefer it, right? Code Me says that he has never done a map comp and is looking forward to some tips and tricks. And I'll tell you that it is easier than you think. Blish HUD and Tez Trails make it a breeze. And if you have all of your mounts unlocked, it's basically a no brainer. I don't 100% follow the Tez Trails guide because he does have a optimal map order, but there are a few things you can do to speed things up, namely buy the hero points from World vs. World vendors first 
buying all of the turn in x items there's like a shopping list before you get started and i will go over all that when i start it up next week soaring leaper said that they wanted main hand shield which i think a true defensive like that true defensive weapon in your main hand would be interesting however i think it would make pvp a nightmare the bunker meta would be off the off the rails it would be horrible to see a shield shield warrior incoming um sitting on a on a capture point but i mean i don't think it's ever going to happen but it's a fun thought coco says eod strikes but only if the rewards are better and i think that is a really good point i obviously want something quick i think the reason why ibs is run so frequently is because of the time to reward ratio so if you have something super long or super challenging or whatever there should be some fat rewards at the end of it and maybe that's why the new fractals and the new strikes feel so bad in comparison is because it's an annoying fight that's long and drawn out and you get the same drab stuff that we've been getting for the last 12 years and with that i want to thank you all for watching a special thanks to all of my subscribers people who hit the like button and those of you that share with me in the comments section i really love seeing what you guys have to say and i read all of my comments so thanks again and i will see you on episode 12 peace